So Sunday. Sunday. We talked about home some more because, you know, that's the work. It's the series. whole thing. It's like the whole point. It's like literally the whole thing. It's like the whole thing. <laughs> so we talked about it and you gave us little pieces of paper. Yep. And asked us mm -hmm. to draw, write, describe. Yep. What home was. Mm hmm So you were preaching. Yeah. So you didn't do it. I didn't. But if you did. Yeah. The good news is I actually did do it as I was thinking about the activity. I was like, what would I draw? I was I was 10 seconds away from walking up to you and handing you mine. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> just to be annoying. <laughs> I wish I would have brought it. But um, so mine has a single hill. Yes. Which is representative of a few things. I grew up on a uh, my home my parents still live in it's called Callahan Mountain and um, where it's at in Springdale where I'm from you can sort of see it in any point in town so it was mm -hmm. always sort of like there's my home but also is connected to the University of Arkansas which is a big part of my identity mm -hmm. also where I proposed to Hannah is at this um, building called Old Main so th there's a hill Old Main is on it a reference to the school there's trees because I grew up in a, like a very forested area I always think of green stuff and then there's my family my people mm -hmm. um, and let's see what else would I put on there that's probably mainly it kind of that geography and the people um, like my immediate family all that sort of stuff my folks so yeah that's probably like when I'm thinking of home that's it I like For that. Sure. Yeah. I put Sammy and Steven. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, Sammy's only like two years old. He's two and a half. He's already moved once. Yeah. Um, yep. And I think since I moved out of my parents' house, like post-college, Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've moved 10 times. Mm -hmm. That may not be right. It may be less than that. I mean, some of that was still within a given geographical area. I just moved from one apartment or house to the next. But I mean, even just since I moved mm. from Katy to Lufkin for my pa first pastoral appointment, I've had four or five. That's right. crazy. So like, I, I can't think of home. My parents don't live where I grew up. Yeah. I can't think of home as being so much a geography as it is people. Home is where Sammy and Steven are. Mm -hmm. um, but if I was naming a place, it would definitely be Rockport because even though I'm in no way, shape or form from there, um, we always went there when I was a kid for like all the special occasions. And then uh, my parents do live there now and mm. that's where we go for, um, you know. Yep just all the good stuff. Yep. It's where Thanksgiving and Christmases are and yep. you know, mm -hmm. that feels like where my people are. And my aunt and uncle live on the same street as my parents. Yeah. So like we kind of run a little cul-de-sac. Yep. And so, yep. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Anyway, but it was an interesting exercise because just to think about home, it's an interesting exercise to think about home in that way, especially as like, uh, in like a visual way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's challenging. And I don't know if you meant it to be like a little bit, well, I'm sure you did with your scripture. It was a little sad to yeah. me. The whole kind of thing was just, which I know, I mean, it was definitely part of the point because you talked yeah. about grief. I definitely meant to connect to grief. That was a big part of the sermon for yeah. sure. Well, so let's talk about that. Yeah. What it means to be home, what that looks like, what that... Uh, can feel like and what it means to be maybe homesick too. For sure. Well, I'm Becca. I'm the pastor of Family Ministries here at Katie First. And I'm Mark. I'm the senior pastor at Katie First. So welcome to the Katie First Family Podcast, where we offer ideas, inspiration, and encouragement to help you and your family grow as joyful disciples of Jesus Christ. And this week we are talking about home. Home. Feeling far from home. Feeling far from home. Yeah, which is also like the title of a Spider-Man movie, but I won't bring that into this conversation. Far from home. That yeah, isn't that the one where they're there in London? Yeah. That one was a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. And your sermon was also good. Thanks. Great. Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs>
there is a connection there. I have often been um, my doppelganger, my like famous doppelganger yeah. that I get. I I don't see it, but I get this enough where it's okay. is Spider Man, um, the OG Spider Man, Tobey Maguire, Tobey Maguire. I could kind of see I get it. that a lot. It's kind of weird. Does anyway, it bother you? Does that bother you? For a while it did, yeah. Oh, well, I don't... Yeah. Then I don't see it at all. I felt some sort of way about it. I'm sorry about that. So this was... Um, so last week we talked about belonging. We talked about um, creating that home. This week was about feeling far from home. And, um, you know, I, I think this is a universal experience for all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, home means a lot of different things. Um it's I, the to get it into the same letter i did place people and presence which is sort of a very broad category of like your culture and um just how you sort of connect and feel a sense of comfort and safety somewhere or with some people mm-hmm. and i think for all of us it's some sort of amalgam mal, amalgamation amalgamation yeah just you, you dub that great. over with someone who said it correctly <laughs> okay you know you did great um and, and, and it's just part of life that you either walk away from that, you are separated from that, you miss it. And, and I try to connect that to what I call just sort of like an archetypal experience in scripture of exile. Like it's just part of the Old Testament is exile. And if you, you know, you read it, it's one of those major themes that just plays out a ton of the sense of being disconnected from what was once home and having to rethink your life now in light of that. Mm -hmm. So we kind of use it as a, or I use that as sort of a home base of like, this is a major theme, I think for a reason, because it connects to our universal experience of missing home in all sorts of different ways. We looked at the prophet Jeremiah, who writes to the exiles um, in Babylon. And instead of giving them this like sort of false hope of, hey, you're going to come home and everything's going to be all right. Instead, he writes this letter that says, um, basically, make a new home now in Babylon, uh, in exile. Mm -hmm. Um, Build houses, get your kids married off, have children there, Mm -hmm. uh, pray for the welfare of Babylon, all this sort of, you're going to have to be here for a while. Um, Mm -hmm. In fact, he says 70 years. And then God says, and I have a plan here. It's a hopeful plan. It's a plan filled with um, a a hopeful future. So, so just using that to say, like, when we feel that, um, one, we already mentioned this. I think grief is just so important in a lot of life. But, but with this particular topic, um, I know I said a lot. I just think our community. This is this is a shared experience because whether you've lived here for a long time and Katie's changed so much mm-hmm. that home feels like it's disappearing from you, mm-hmm. or like many people, you've moved in, mm-hmm. and you know finding location in suburbia is sort of hard. Um, finding that sense of kind of home mm-hmm. is hard, and um, and so I think we all sort of experience that. Jeremiah's words can have something to say to us about what it means to replant ourselves here. Um, even if maybe this didn't feel originally like home or it's changed a lot. So talked about grieving, um, connecting, leaning in. Those are sort of when you feel far from home, grieve that loss, because unless you heal, it's going to be hard. Connect, find people, be a community, know you're not alone and lean in, um, which was sort of like what I was trying to say in, Trust. Trust that God's going to do something good here. Just lean into the culture of the place you're in. Lean into the life that's there. Maybe it's not what you grew up with. Maybe it's not the home that you have idealized in your mind. But the real version is always better than this fake thing that we build up. So we talked about that. And then I had fellow preachers with me, and it was great. I loved having... um, Yeah. Thompson's and Helena and Barry and Irene, and they all talked about their experiences of yeah. of being far from home, making home. and That was one of the things that stood out good. to me was the, with the grief. I don't know that the Thompsons would have called it grief. That might... But she just talked about missing some mm. things, like being able to see 
the sunset and the geese come in and all of that stuff mm-hmm. that she used to be able to see that from her back porch and she couldn't do that anymore. And she never said the word grief. She yep. just said she misses it. Yep. But she also enumerated things that she loves now. And I thought that that was so interesting. They didn't actually physically relocate, like you said. Right. And yet there's still this sense of because of things being different. It's both. Yeah. Right. It's people missing some place that was, you know, not here. And also people missing what was here not being here anymore. Mm-hmm. It, it's this mm-hmm. dual sided. And I thought that the, you know, your guest preachers, um, they did a really good job just in telling their own stories of highlighting. Yeah. Because that also brings us to a commonality, right? Of like, yep, it's not the same thing, but it's the same feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that to me, that was like, that was encouraging Mm -hmm. and a healthy thing. Yeah. So I appreciated that sharing. Plus, that's a pretty vulnerable thing I I felt like to to share. Um, Yeah. The things that you miss, whether it's from far away or from just time gone by. Yeah. For sure. So I appreciated that. And plus it was just cool to hear other people's experiences. Like it's wild to me when I think about it, but yeah, no, I've never lived outside the state of Texas. Yeah. So I started my sermon and I said, I was actually a little surprised at how many people raised their hand for born and raised out of the state. I mean, it was probably half and half. Yeah. 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 Like half of the people probably have grown up here and half were somewhere outside the state and moved in. That was actually larger than what I was anticipating. Yeah. I mean, well, and I think that makes sense for Katie. Yeah, it does. Um, And so, I mean, yeah, it might be surprising because it feels like we're all from here now. Um, Or it feels that way to me. I I don't know. Maybe that's just I'm not paying enough attention. Maybe that's something I need to pay more attention to. But, um, yeah, I'm always just surprised too. Like, Texas also feels like such a specific culture. Yeah. Like, we're, it's different than every other state. And I'm not saying that is just pride. It is also pride. But it's not just pride in that. Listen, it's, as someone who didn't grow up in Texas, let me confirm for you, you're your own unique culture. We are. It's, a, <laughs> it's, it's Southern, but it's a different kind of Southern. You know, it's, it's its own thing. I'll confirm that. Yeah. My dad texts me every March 2nd. Happy Texas Independence Day. Yeah. This yeah. is just our bit. Like, yeah. this is just our thing that we do. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I, um, so last week it was really easy for me to be like, these are the things I loved about your sermon. Mm. I still felt like it was a good sermon. I just didn't appreciate how much it stuck with me. Like I'm still trying to process because that grief part doesn't ever totally. And I think that's was true for the Israelites. Well, way more true than it is for me. I don't know if you know that there's a Taylor Swift song that talks about this. I can go anywhere I want, anywhere I want, just not home. Those are the lyrics. Just so you know, Taylor Swift really applies to everything. Wow, Taylor. Yeah, just bringing it back to to the Swifties. (laughs) But seriously, it's true that this feeling of like uh, my parents don't live in the town I grew up in. I haven't been back there in forever. Um, my grandparents are no longer living, so there's nobody for me to visit there. Mm -hmm. Um, the sense of like where I'm from, I I don't know. It doesn't, I don't feel like this. I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like I have a hometown in the same way that maybe other people do. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like it did, it, it resonated in a weird way. But I've always, and as also as somebody who like sort of professionally has to move, yeah. right? My, oh yeah, my my sense of like what home is, is with just within the bounds of the Texas Annual Conference. Yeah. I've never been outside the, I've never lived outside yeah. the bounds of the Texas Annual Conference, with the exception of like during like school. Which I'll say, I think is also very common. At least one person that I had talked to about being on the video Mm -hmm. wasn't quite comfortable because they had moved a lot Mm -hmm. and and were struggling with that. Mm -hmm. And and I totally understood. Like, that's hard. Like, if you're like, I don't really know where I would call. I've never maybe been somewhere long enough or connected somewhere long enough or my life has just been so eclectic. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's real for sure. When I was thinking about, okay, so then what do we talk about, you know, with a family, this idea of realistic versus idealistic. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things we do when we're 
actively raising families is try to live into maybe sometimes an over idealist idealized version mm-hmm. um either taking things from our background that we loved or hated and trying to you know bring those forward in the best way so if it was something that we absolutely loved then we want that for our kids if it was something we felt like wasn't good then we w- will try to like correct maybe even overcorrect that so that our kids have the experience we want them to have. Yeah. And yeah. I got to thinking about like, cause one of the things that I um, still long for that I, I love Katie and I love living here and it's so convenient to live across the street from the church, but because we're not in a neighborhood, yeah. there are some things that I wish that like, I remember growing up and we would do like 4th of July bicycle parades. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Um, where you decorate your bike and you do like, and so I wish that Sammy could have some access to those kinds of things. I'm not even sure neighborhoods do that kind of thing <laughs> anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? And I, it, also there's things just like that we did growing up, like ride our bikes within the neighborhood to the pool, like the, yeah. to the neighborhood pool. No way on God's green earth am I sending my child to the pool without me. I'm not judging somebody else. I just, I maybe know too many stories. Yeah. So things that like, you know, we used to would do or like those, you know, like just that realistic that we can't have that maybe idealized version yeah. in our head. Cause the truth is my mom just was kicking us out of the house cause we were driving her nuts. It wasn't this like sweet sort of romantic like way of looking at it, you yeah. know? Um, so how do we mm. intentionally create in healthy ways, Yeah, you know, home, for the people who live in ours. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, let me, I'm just gonna respond because I don't know if I have the answer yet, but, so I was reviewing a, some, a journal that I had written probably not too long after I got here. Mm-hmm. As I have said, this has been percolating in my um, myself for a long time. And I, I wrote a, a journal entry back then that was struggling with where I was um, and and I wrote on the idea of hurtful hope um, and it was what I was trying to articulate was essentially the grass is always greener on the other side there's yeah. always going to be a job that you want better there's always going to be a town that you think is going to be a better fit for you mm-hmm. and it's this sense of this isn't where I'm supposed to be yet but I have hope that I'm going to go somewhere else mm-hmm. which can be kind of fine if you're if you are in a bad spot Mm -hmm. but that can also be really hurtful Mm -hmm. in the same way that those prophets that jeremiah was speaking about of saying you're going to come home soon and him saying no you're not Mm -hmm. you're going to be here and and the quicker and he didn't say this but i'm the quicker you settle into babylon Mm -hmm. and make a life there i think the healthier and better it's going to be and that was one of the things i was thinking about early was like I think it's, I think I'm harming myself by not leaning into where I'm at now Mm -hmm. and constantly trying to tell myself there's something better that I'm waiting on it to just show up in my life. Mm -hmm. And, and even what you're talking about, which is funny now, I, so I grew up in a home that was wooded with six acres around us. I always sort of kind of dreamed of living in a neighborhood Oh, funny! because I never did. Yeah. Now I live in a neighborhood. I want to live in a six acre home right. with woods, yeah. you know? So it's like, there's, I think there's just, all, it's part of who we are. Um, yeah. That's the less, maybe a lesson on contentment or something that we all have to wrestle with. No, that's of, fair. But, um, so that didn't really answer how do we do that, but maybe it's just being mindful of that kind of bias that we will have to inevitably maybe recognize. Like, mm-hmm. um, the grass maybe isn't, always greener Mm -hmm. and maybe where you're at is there's something uniquely good about it yeah and and learning to lean into that as this is home right now what yeah what's the phrase that goes with that it the grass is greener uh where you water it yeah yeah that's right yeah that's it um Mm -hmm. that makes sense to me right Mm -hmm. like um whether you're in Katie 
are part of this community now because you were stoked and you wanted to be here, which is definitely the case for my family, or because that's just kind of where you needed to be for whatever reason, or you've always been here and it's now kind of a struggle because it's so different. Like, I kind of get that if you lived here and it was this sweet small town, the traffic alone is enough to make you nuts now. Mm -hmm. I mean, just honestly, Mm -hmm. Um, even just from 10 years ago when I was here before, it's like, it's totally different, way more wild. Yeah. So I told, I think all of that is valid. All of those scenarios are valid, Yeah. but recognizing, but this is where I live and, um, and wanting to be a part of something really beautiful and believing it can be. Yeah. I'm, and I'm here for it. Like, I think this idea of, um, I'm stuck on this phrase that you use that I think you just, you still, I don't think you feel like was a big deal, but you're wrong. It was <laughs> <laughs> this like coworkers and doubt and faith. I think yeah. also coworkers and, in, in um, in feeling homesick and For in sure. making home. For sure. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I think that's really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. There's challenges to making home in Katie and also beautiful opportunities. Yeah. Um, and that's true even in our church family yeah. of challenges of making your home at Katie first and really beautiful things too. Yeah. So. Absolutely. I, I, I do think the location of our church in this yeah. part of Katie is, yeah. is such a benefit. Yeah. And I mean, suburban life is, is fine. It has a lot of good things about it. Mm-hmm. The, the other side of it is it, it can be become a very non-localized sort of Li- living but where we're literally at in katie it sort of still feels like a small town which yep. is nice yep because it makes you feel like you're somewhere that is somewhere yeah there's, there's a town square there's these old trees there's um a water tower and 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 it has this sense of location and like little local shops and yeah yeah and and i think in an ideal world any church in america is that sort of a little home yeah. away from home sort of yeah and you know so i don't know i mean i i don't have the answers on exactly how we do this <laughs> yeah so i well i think that's I, we talked about this a few weeks ago with the, yeah. the itch and the scratch of a sermon right so i just feel like this sermon was a little bit more itchy yeah and it, there's not there's not a total and it would have i think it, that's true to the scripture um it's like okay guys this is it and actually, one of the things I wrote down on my sheet to start to, like, think about for more, like, one of my notes that I wrote for, like, uh, to delve into later cause mm-hmm. it was, was, what do you do when when you know everything's going to be okay, but it's not now, and you're not okay with that? Yep. Like, that's, I feel like that's a real, uh, that's how that, that's what that sermon evoked for me. Yeah. Um, That conversation, even now, like, we can't wrap this up. There's no bow to put on it. Right. Um, Rather just to be like, okay, so, you know, dive in. Make your home here. Mm -hmm. Um, Unpack your boxes. You know, as clergy we do, we often, um, you know, I'm at this clergy, we often itinerate and blah, blah, blah. Stephen went through a period where he had to move quite a bit. Mm. And then there was a, an appointment that was only a year long. He knew it was going to only be a year. Um, and he didn't hang any pictures up at first mm. in his house. Mm-hmm. And um, he had some, like a, a close friend of his who was like, you need to hang a picture. You know, you're only going to be there a year, but this is where you are for a whole year. And you need to just, you need to put pictures on the wall. And I, yeah. To, that's helpful advice whether you, you know how long you're going to be in a place or not yeah right settle in six yeah. months yeah six weeks yes 60 years yeah settle in yeah make it home yeah i like it slash it's actually really frustrating sorry i i want to like find the happy note to leave on you got one I think I think the happy note is that misused verse out of Jeremiah. Yeah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, plans filled with the future filled with hope. That that's always plucked out, out of the, the context of Jeremiah having told people settle down and be in exile for a while. And so I think if there's a happy note, it's that um, yeah. 
yeah, God's God is, there's always goodness in this. Yeah. Um, not happy in like, it's going to be perfect. Yeah. But that was also the point of remembering these dreams can be harmful. Like perfection is not what we're seeking. We're seeking the real, the authentic. Yeah. And trusting that something's, and, and you know, like if you back up 10 years, 12 years, 20 years, and you look like hindsight's always twenty twenty, and you sure. can go, look at God did there. That got me here. So like, yeah. I think, I think it's, I do think it's a, a more, I'll say a more mature way of thinking of home and yeah. belonging. Yeah. That's a little more content. It's not compromised, but it's contented in the reality of life. Yeah. Um, that's fair. That this can be good too with complexity. I mean, what do we say in your ordinary messy lives? You yeah. know, we believe in that. that yeah. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today in this sort of. <laughs> <laughs> itchy, uncomfortable, yet hopefully also um, inspiring, um, even as it is challenging conversation. And we do hope that you have found some inspiration and encouragement for yourself and for your family. If you'd like to get this weekly podcast delivered directly to you, you can subscribe or follow us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify for more information on all the things that are going on in our church, which it's about to amp up. It's coming. Yep, we've got pumpkin patch stuff going on. You can sign up for that, for to volunteer in the patch, to read to the preschoolers in the patch. Trunk or Treat will be here in like half a second. Fall studies will be starting in October. Like there's like... A lot coming up. Gazillion things. So yeah. you can find out all of that information on our website, katiefirst.org. Most importantly, we want you to know that um, wherever you are in the middle of your ordinary messy life, that whatever that looks like for you in this moment, that you are not alone, you are doing a good job, and you are so loved. Join us for week three because it's going to be the best sermon in the sermon series. I need you to go ahead and like ratchet that down. <laughs> Expectations need to be lowered, please. Preached by <laughs> Pastor Reverend Becca Newcomb. That's Pastor you. Reverend. <laughs> Pastor Reverend. <laughs> New name tag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the snippet? What are you talking about? We're gonna be talking about uh, growing together, and the way in social holiness, which is a very Wesleyan co like conversation. Definitely. And what does it mean for us to need each other? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean for one, us to um, to grow in our faith as we make home together? Love it. I'm looking forward to it. So, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <you. laughs> so join us and till then, have a great week. We'll see you hopefully on Sunday. Yay. Yay. Bye. Bye.